So it's around 8.30 Saturday night. Just woke up from a nap not too long ago. So the plan for tonight is I'm gonna hit the gym downstairs, do a little bit of a workout, and then get back up to the office and play some online poker. So we're gonna do an online session today. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, so logged into Ignition and got on to four tables of 5 and L regular 6 max pretty quickly. Games look to be uber soft, pretty crazy, lots of fish, lots of action. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. All right, so it's 11.30 at night here in California, and games are looking to be pretty good on Ignition Casino, as I suspected. Lots of tables running, lots of action, lots of fish, lots of money being shoved around, and lots of unpredictable fish. So I was able to get onto four tables of 5 and L regular 6 max games, literally right when I got into the lobby. So this is what the lobby looks like. Let me scroll this over. I've got a couple of hands I'm definitely going to be playing, but you'll notice games are just uber soft. So things are looking pretty good. Um, so definitely going to be firing a continuation bet here on this table. And we're definitely going to flat. And this is actually pretty close. I don't think we want to call an ISO raise out of position just because we don't know how these two opponents are going to react. Um, with the tables being so fishy, I won't be surprised to see somebody I mean, potentially, I mean, I guess it's possible somebody might limp re-raise. So being out of position, I'm just going to fold just because... I don't know anything about this opponent that just came onto the table. Here, we're just going to check to the Razor preflop, and then Pocket Jacks. This is interesting. I think we're just going to 3-bet and look to get the money in. Um, out of position in the big blind. We're only playing three ways with this guy sitting now. He's going to shove. We're just going to snap call in the hope that we're ahead, and we just need to fade and ace, and voila, we flop the boat. So uh, good times, easy game when you end up flopping um, top boat. So really not much to talk about right there. 5-8, we're not going to raise blind versus blind. This guy's been kind of crazy, to be honest. And it looks like this table's dying, which is kind of unfortunate. I'm not going to play three ways when there's tons of other awesome tables available. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get off this table and get onto another table when there's just so many soft tables running right now. So I'm going to look for another table and try to get on one fairly quickly. So we'll get onto this table. So this guy has been very interesting. He's been bluffing, um, and he's also been value betting a lot as well. So he's very polarized. Um, in one hand, he had something like seven, ten of diamonds. He ended up making the flush on the river, and I made middle pair, and he overbet the pot. It looked like a, a bluff. I had seen him bluff before and ended up paying him off. So it just goes to show that even though somebody's a 71-7, it doesn't mean that they're not going to play straightforward. Sometimes they're going to be kind of bluffy, and so we have to be on the lookout for that. So in terms of how the session's been going, I played 68 hands, and it's 
kind of been all over the place. It's only 68 hands so far, but you know, I would kind of went down pretty quickly, gone some uh, pretty tricky situations with three vet pots and so forth. And now we're back um, up in the positive a little bit. So small sample size really doesn't matter. But yeah, you know, games are soft. Games are running pretty good. If there weren't any games running at 5 and L and 10 and L, I was going to jump on some 25 and L. And 25 and L games look to be pretty soft as well right now. So I had planned on going to Thunder Valley Casino last Thursday, but there was this just terrible storm that came through town and literally started raining early in the morning and was just showering all day into the night. And so the freeways were just jam-packed. There were accidents everywhere. Um, and if I looked on the freeways, everything was just like literally red on Google Maps. So what's typically to the casino, typically around a 40 minute drive was at least over an hour early in the afternoon when I was looking. And then when I was going to leave after work, I'm pretty sure it pretty would have been at least an hour and a half. So I ended up forgetting that idea and decided not to play. was planning on playing online that night, but actually didn't end up playing that night. Um, I think I got tired and passed out and, and went to bed early. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but I wanted to go play there and I plan on going playing next week because they're doing this promotion for Christmas and the holidays where on Tuesdays and Thursdays, all the way up through the end of the year, actually all the way up through Christmas, I believe, um, from sometime in the morning, the first six hours in the morning, something like up to like 11 um, a.m. from early in the morning, they do a drawing every hour and then from 6 p.m. all the way up through like 11 a.m. at night, they do another drawing and they give away to a couple of people to get $500, two people get $200 and then they have a bunch of electronics as well that they're giving away like laptops, iPads, Xbox Ones, you name it, all sorts of cool stuff. So here we could potentially call, but I don't know enough about these opponents being uh, my second hand on the table, so I'm just going to fold 10-7 suited. Typically, at 5 and L on ignition, you probably can't call because people aren't going to ISO raise that often, but this guy does ISO raise, so um, not to be results oriented there, folding, but just goes to show that we need to get some reads on our opponents before we make moves like that. Pocket threes, this is optional. Some people recommend, I recommend raising um, deuces up through fives under the gun. Beginners, I actually recommend folding um, deuces through fives under the gun just because most flops suck. And if you're not good at playing post-flop, then it gets you into a lot of sticky situations. So this guy's playing a 22-11 game. He's pretty weak tight. I don't like the ace hitting the board. I don't really, I'm not worried too much about the seven or the three. Um, he is folding to two-thirds of C-bets. So I am going to take a stab at it. I don't think it's mandatory, but I think it's fine just seeing how he is folding to a high percentage of flop C-bets. I think we can take a stab on this flop and hope to represent the ace. I mean... 5 and L players on ignition aren't that good, and they're not going to know that I'm C-betting this flop, just representing an ace, so I think it's fine to bet there. Versus a thinking opponent, I probably might just check back that flop with a little bit of showdown value and position, but it's close. So I started tagging opponents, but I haven't gone back through and tagged them. Um, and I specifically haven't gone through this table yet, but I guess I can start going through. So we have a 2314. I mean, it's hard to tell after 22 hands if he's a reg or not. We have a 3019. Again, hard to tell as well. Typically, anybody that is a full stack, I don't start tagging them unless I know that they're uber fish. This guy looks to be a nit. This guy looks to be actually a bit of, a little weak passive. Um, so player six, I think I'm going to label him as a fish. Now this guy is a somewhat aggressive fish. He's a 38, 31. Um, he looks like he has regular stats, but he, from what I've seen, he actually looks to be kind of fishy. So standard open on the button with our King Jack. I hope this table doesn't die out. I mean, it doesn't look to be that great, to be honest. A 31, 21, a 38, 31, and a 13, 8. So we might actually switch tables up. Um, jumping over to this table, we definitely have, and we'll open this playing four ways so we're definitely going to mark player four as a fish we'll definitely mark nobody else on this table is a fish um not enough stats yet to 
determine if somebody is a fish or not. So this is a very interesting flop. I think we can check this. This guy's not folding to C bets anyways. Um, it's a small stat, but so here against two opponents out of position one, I'll just raise this up to six X. And then on the turn, our showdown value isn't that vulnerable, so I'm not too worried. Only thing that we're really worried about is a king. So we can just take a check call line. And this guy limp raises. I mean, this guy's super fishy, so we're obviously going to call. This is a guy that I've been getting some weird spots with before. And, of course, the king comes, but I think we can probably still check call. Um, I think we have to call. And this is board texture. It's just really crappy. I mean... I'm not going to call for five. I mean, I'm not going to fold for five cents. So, I mean, if he just put, keeps putting five cents in, then I'm going to call. And he has jack four and he flops two pairs. So, I mean, there you go. The guy is just an uber fish. I mean, he he um, limps and men three bets, jack four suited. So, um, that's just a really crappy result, but it is what it is. Just goes to show um, he's a 74 11, but he's playing hyper aggressive. In certain spots so definitely a fish um 58 37 definitely not a fish just yet after 19 hens so we're not going to label him yet down on this table 29 29 29 14 definitely a fish for player number one and 88 63 after eight hands we just know if he's on a heater or not so we're not going to label him and then for this player, he's out, so I'm not going to mark him until he comes back. Now, small blind versus big blind, 8-10 off. I actually think it's pretty marginal. This guy is not folding to steal attempts. Um, it's only been one attempt. So I am actually going to fold until I know a bit more about how often he folds to steal attempts. But ace-9 off, blind versus blind, this is going to be standard. And we flop enough down straight draw with two overs, so pretty simple spot to fire a continuation bet as a semi-bluff. I don't expect us to get folds that often on a connected board like this, but we have tons of equity with, we could hit an ace, we could hit a 10, we could hit a 9, we could hit a 5, anything that allow us to double barrel. Um, this guy's a nit, otherwise we could potentially squeeze here because this guy's calling a lot, but since this guy's playing a 7 slash 0 game, I think we should probably just flat here. I'm not too worried about somebody else trying to squeeze this out of the hand. So I'm not going to double barrel in here just because I'm going to try to see a free card. I just don't see him folding that often. When he does bet here, I think we probably the best move since our equity isn't that great. Even though we do have two overs and up down straight draw, um, I don't think we have enough equity with just one card to, to come. So I think we just fold out of position. In position, we'd probably call. And against his opponent, this is a pretty easy call. He checks. I think we should fire um, probably around, I think 70 cents is fine. We don't have to bet that much. And he snap calls. So this is actually a pretty interesting river because... What do we beat for aces? I mean, he's playing a 7-0 game. We don't beat ace-queen. We definitely don't beat ace-king. Do we beat ace-10, ace-9? Is he opening those hands that are that weak? So I think we need to thin value bet. But I'm going to make it a mount that he can call with something that's not an ace. But I expect that he does call sometimes. with. I mean, he looks to be a net. He's probably going to call with ace-queen sometimes. Ace-king, I think that he doesn't slow down. Um, so, yeah, I mean... That's why I bet such a small amount that I wanted him to call with, with anything else but an ace. All right, so back to this table. Let's make sure I didn't miss anybody that's potentially fish, and we'll check this table real quick as well. Uh, blind versus blind, getting 3-1. to one. Easy call, even though it's not a good hand. But we're getting decent pot odds, so I think we can call. Um, this is interesting. This guy's playing a 64-45 game. He's c-betting 50% of the time. Small sample, size, small sample size. I think I'm going to call once in position with a pair of sixes. Uh, we can always end up turning two pair. It's a wet board texture, so I'm going to bet a little on the bigger side. 
And I'm gonna make him, I'm gonna show him the king. It looks like we just called just to hit a king. <laughs> Not letting him know that it actually had a pair. I love doing this on anonymous poker just to throw people off. I did that earlier in a different hand where the flush came and I showed the opponent um, the ace high for the flush, even though I had top pair, top kicker anyways. So I just kind of like to throw people off in anonymous poker to get them thinking about what I'm doing and just to have them think that I'm actually um, calling with pretty marginal hands a lot and I'm sucking out on them. Messes with their mental game. And it's nice because it's anonymous poker, so it's really not that exploitable. So player Deuce, we're definitely going to list him as a fish now for open limping. And we're going to fold, and we pick up the ladies, which is pretty awesome. Expect this guy to open a lot. I mean, he is, VPIP is 62, and his PFR is 46. So I don't expect him to fold that often, so we're going to ISO raise pretty large. Well, actually not pretty large. I mean, we make it 5x instead of 4x, so, I mean, it's not that large. He folds, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. A6 off is a fold. Um, I could have opened um, my king 8 off, I believe, over here. I actually should have opened it um, rather than auto folding. This guy's a bit of a nit, so I do need to be a bit wary with ace jack suited here. He's playing a 12 slash 6 game after 35 hands. He could just be card dead. Here I'm going to call. This guy's a 27 10, so I don't expect him to um, try to squeeze us out of the hand that often. So I think we can call for implied odds with 9 8 suited going four ways we do flop middle pair it's not the best flop in the world so should we call a continuation bet and actually it just depends on who's betting and their, what their sizing is we're out of position we don't have that much equity so it's probably a fold a high frequency of the time so i'm going to check uh, both opponents end up checking back on two streets i don't think we need to actually fire um away on this turn so we do because we have ace high decent showdown value a 10 actually gives us a trade we're not really worried about the 10 um so i'm not too worried of actually trying to take this down when i actually have showdown value with an ace high and when he bets on the river he's playing a 14-0 game it's just easy fold with our ace jack so we're actually going to go ahead and label that player as a fish as well So getting back to this hand, let's say that we had a queen high. Um, let's say that we had something that didn't really have that much showdown value. I think we probably should take a stab on the turn when it checks back twice. But when we have ace high, I think we can try to get to showdown and win with ace high a lot when nobody's taking a stab at the pot. We get big slick, standard open on the button. And we're definitely going to be calling with a6 since everybody else calls. And this is the flop we need to watch out for. This is um, this is where it gets a bit precarious and where I think a lot of beginning players probably get in trouble is when you flop top pair with a really bad kicker. Um, the question is, well, what do you do? Do you actually call a bet or do you fold? I mean... It's it's pretty tough, to be honest. So jack-9 off, I think it's a fold, for, even though it is a min-raise. I don't know how this guy's going to react to his short stack. Um, this makes my decision pretty easy when that guy raises. I think we can open 9-7 suited in the cutoff, especially with a fish in the small blind. And we're going to fold our weak ace. Make sure I top up on this table. Interesting flop, interesting flop. So we have two overs, backdoor flush draw. I think we need to fire a continuation bet on this board texture. The turn card, really not the best turn card in the world. He snaps us off. And the flush gets there. Is So he's playing a 28-9 game. I'm going to check back, hoping that he checks back. Um, Ace-5 off. I don't think it's strong enough to ISO raise. And this river card just sucks. So we're pretty much done with this hand. Pretty much went the opposite way that we wanted it to go. We wanted a 9. We wanted a 7. And he snaps me off with an ace-high. So... 
Yeah, that says a lot about him. Um, let's actually pull that up and look at that. So he doesn't really have any equity other than an ace high. So for player one, definitely want to take a note that he is calling CBET with ace high. So I want to make note, make a note that if he's not folding the C bets, I want to know what he's actually calling the C bet with. Is he actually calling the C bet with a hand that has equity, or is he calling the C bet just to call the C bet because he's a calling station? And for him, he's just a calling station. He has ace high. He wants to try to hit an ace on the turn. So in his eyes, it's just an easy call. Ace king, get no action. That's fine. Uh, again, this guy is a pretty nitty, pretty tight opponent. So pocket nines is just a call and position. We don't need to turn it into a bluff. We expect some of these fish to come along as well. And this guy is just pretty uber crazy. Can we actually call? So here's the tough spot. Um, it depends. If he calls, we can call. Um, but if he doesn't call, we can't call. So let's actually put the time bank in in a second. So I'll put the calculator in. So 77 minus 17. So we have to call 60 cents. And to break even, we need to win $6. Um, so we have to stack both of them. The question is, do we stack both of them? Does this guy come along? Then yeah. So since he comes along, I am going to call. Um, pocket nines are actually strong enough anyways, I think, a majority of the time. So just to break even, we need to get $6. And between both of them, there's um, almost $8. So I think that it's a fine call there. But when we miss with our set mind, then we fold. And this is why we have good implied odds. So this guy's definitely got a strong hand. This guy's definitely got a strong hand. You can expect the money to go in. So um, the implied odds here was pretty good in this situation with pocket nines. And this guy is a bit of either a maniac or a lag anyways. All right, well, it looks like we are at 20 minutes. Um, I think that's actually a pretty good time for the live play for our nightly grind vlog for the YouTube channel. Um, let's see what happens with this. This guy was actually just bluffing. So, I mean, he looks like he's, he's playing C betty and three bet pot and then folds. Um, just tells us that he actually probably isn't that strong. So anyways, I hope you guys like this live session. In terms of the session, um, it's small sample size, just over 150 hands. And it looks like we are just around break even. I mean, nothing really to talk about, but I think we got into some I don't know, some pretty basic situations. Hopefully it was some interesting spots for you guys. Nothing like too tricky, to be honest, but just some just pretty standard situations. So if you like tonight's vlog, please click the thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you haven't headed over and checked out Microgrinder Poker School yet, go ahead and head over to microgrinder.com. Check out all of our low cost and free resources for you guys, my fellow poker players. So, um, you know what, before we end the vlog, we end up flopping top two pair. And so against this guy, I'm actually going to bet on the pretty big side. So let's play this hand and then we'll end tonight's vlog and hope we don't get coolered. I'll show him a jack. I mean, he wants to show me a three, I'll show him a jack. Uh, I have no problem showing the the fish that I had top air. So um, allows me to bluff later in the game anyways. So anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys watching and take care. Hope you guys have a good night and I will see you at our next poker vlog.